China and her mom have a problem. Someone keeps leaving things on their doorstep. Strange things. Some wooden piece to something. I don't know. Spooky things. That's just a decoration, right? Who could be doing this, and why? Are they trying to tell us something? Doesn't seem to be a pattern here. What do you think, China? Just as stumped as us, we need to investigate. Let's set up a hidden camera to see if we can catch them in the act. Aha! Here's our suspect. China? It's been you all along. Why? Are these gifts? I guess that's nice. Some construction thing. Thank you. But where's all this stuff coming from? This can't be from the store. I'm pretty sure you don't have money, China. So where are you getting all this stuff? <gasps> have you been stealing these things? Oh, not talking. Hmm. Okay. Well, let's just not steal any more things. All right? China, what's this? Trash. Is that what that is? Oh, thanks. Darts? Fireworks? Wood? Oh my God! What are you building? Huh? What are you building? This has gotten way out of hand. We don't want or need these gifts, China. Don't bring the stuff in here. You're gonna get us in big trouble. China, you need to stop stealing things. Your mom is right. This has to stop. And if you're not gonna fess up, well, we're gonna follow you, China, to see what's really going on. <gasps> You've been stealing from the neighbors. Well, we are going to return these things. Sorry, neighbors. Just leave that there for them. You might think that's the end of it, but just because she's been caught, will China stop stealing? Not a chance. Every day, her mom finds something new, and every day she has to return it. <sighs> China, what are we gonna do with you? We know you're just trying to give gifts, China, but we don't need a stolen pair of socks. Even if it was very nice of you to bring both, lucky for you, the neighbors don't mind. Which means your cat burglar ways aren't hurting anyone, and getting little gifts for us seems to make you happy. All right, I'll admit it is kind of fun seeing what you bring every day. Let's see what she has. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Piece of cement. Though the tiny Halloween skulls, we could do without. Just too spooky. Back where you belong. My name's Tuna, and I have a secret. Do you want to know what it is? My parents sure do. Tuna, what were you doing? You'd love to know where I go all day, wouldn't you? Oh, you think if you give me treats, I'll tell you? Nope, never gonna happen. But I'll take another treat. <laughs> I'm gone for hours at a time. Tula, come on. What are you doing? That's probably why they put a GPS tracker on me to figure it out. I'm just fascinated by this. This is what you do. But they still don't know. I'll tell you though. Come closer. Okay, stop. That's perfect. I, Tuna the cat. I'm a master at tricking people into leaving presents at my house. <laughs> How, you ask? Allow me to enlighten thee. It all begins on my front porch. I sit there, looking cute as a cucumber. I'm so adorable. People passing by can't help but visit. With a face like this, who could resist? To my devious delight, they often bring packages filled with goodies in them. What kind of goodies, you ask? That's for me to know and you to wonder. <laughs> Once they arrive, phase two begins. I distract them with my special moves. Behold, my moves! 
the tailocopter, the roly poly, the wall slide, the wiggle and flop, and of course, the loud meow. Simple but effective. By the time they're finished petting me, they've forgotten all about their things. And they leave! <laughs> Behold my stuff! This house plant! This couch! This black brick! This thingy! But hiding my secret has become. When are you coming in? Let's just say harder to hide. Not from my parents. <laughs> but from him. I think he knows. Why can't you just be like the dogs, huh? They know how to mind their own business. No matter. I'm like a ghost. Whoosh. Other than you, no one will ever know my secret. For I am Tuna! A master of deception, a shadow of shadows. Perhaps one day we shall meet and your stuff shall become mine. <laughs> Mazzy Dog has a problem. Someone keeps coming into her yard every night. Someone or something. But by the time she goes outside in the morning, they're already gone and her toys are all over the place. Who is doing this? Why are they doing it? Is it a raccoon? Is it a tiger? Mazzy needs to know. She's gonna stay up all night and wait. Mazzy, I hear them, go! Oh, she almost caught them. What did they look like? Hmm, only one stripe on the tail. Can't be a raccoon. She does have orange fur, but I'm pretty sure a tiger wouldn't have run away from you, Mazzy. Then who is it? <sighs> Mazzy, we're gonna need to get more serious. We'll get ourselves a hidden camera and see what we can see. Aha! It's our suspect. But who or what are you? She looks like a dog. <gasps> She's a fox! A wild fox right outside the window. She must be the one playing with Mazzy's toys. Maybe we can catch her in the act. She's roaming around, but not touching the toys? Hmm, maybe this mystery isn't over. Who could be? Oh, she has a friend. Two Fox best friends. Ah, she was waiting for him to play and chase each other and wrestle. <clears throat> Whatever that is. We solved the mystery, Mazzy. These are the two who keep messing with your toys. <laughs> Mazzy, are you mad at the foxes? Why? For playing with your toys? <laughs> Mazzy, be nice to the foxes. They're just trying to have some fun. Will you let them have fun? I know it's your backyard. That's a very good girl, Mazzy. You keep a close eye on the fox friends, but let them have the yard at night. And maybe someday you could play out there with them. Wouldn't that be something? What is that? I honestly don't know. Looks like a, some sort of a lizard. 
But whatever it is, it's tiny. This poor baby animal was rescued from a pond. Calvin and Ruth spotted him and pulled him to safety. They wanted to reunite him with his mom, but she was nowhere to be found. Which means Calvin and Rue are about to become parents to a mystery animal. Well, at first I thought it was a very tiny baby squirrel. Then I realized squirrels aren't that small when they're newborn. Then I thought it was a mouse. I just saw the big bulky eye, so I thought it was a chameleon. But lizards don't have fur, so how could it be a lizard? Calvin and Rue decided to bring him home with them. They got a formula or milk or something. They could feed their tiny new friend. He was so hungry. He probably hadn't eaten in a long time. Wait a second. That's a baby rat. I've honestly never seen a baby rat before. He's so cute. Since he was going to be staying with them for a while, they needed to give him a name. They decided on Mizumi, or Umi for short. That means rat in Japanese. Appropriate. It wasn't easy taking care of such a young animal. Umi's new parents had to be very gentle with him. He's so small. He could get hurt so easily. They fed him a lot. Cared for him. And gave him tons of love. Little by little, Umi got bigger and started getting used to living in the house. Before they knew it, Umi felt right at home. Kelvin and Rue didn't worry about Umi getting hurt anymore. Instead, they worried about him acting, well, kind of sneaky. Because Umi loves to steal pretty much everything. No, 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 no. And if you can't steal it, you might burrow into it. Umi, what are you doing here? No, 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 no. And they can't just keep their stuff on shelves out of reach because Umi's a very good climber. He can go almost anywhere, like right up the walls. They tried to give him treats to keep him from being sneaky. But sometimes Umi's a picky eater. He's kind of a handful. But whenever Umi's parents need a hug, Umi's always there to try and make them feel better. He's a little rat with a big heart. Umi can be pretty naughty. But his new family loves him so, so much. Rats like Umi are smart, loving, and sometimes a little sneaky. But they're also the best friend you could ask for. Whoa! Excuse me, coming through. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Stick, 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 stick. Do, 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 I have a stick. Do, do, do. Oh, hi there. My name is Snoop, and I love sticks. Like this one, or this one. So many sticks. I love my sticks, and my sticks love me. But let's get serious for a second, because I'm in a bit of a sticky situation. I am on a very important mission to find the biggest stick in the world. I've found small sticks, I found medium sticks, and some pretty large sticks too. But now it's time to find the biggest. It will be mine, and I will take it home and make it the centerpiece of my great stick collection. But where could this big gigantic stick be? I have searched the entire world, and I can't find it anywhere. It's gotta be around here somewhere. Is it floating in here? Maybe it's over here. Could it be a muddy stick? Ah. Mud. I'll just relax here for a minute. Okay, break time is over. <laughs> time to find that. No, Dad, I cannot shower right now. It will delay the mission. 
Don't you know I have to find the biggest stick? It's been my lifelong dream, ever since I decided it was. Could this be it? No, it's definitely this one. What about this one? Let's just take them all home. Gonna take all my sticks home, do do do. Do do do, just me and my sticks. Oh no, who put this here? Don't they know I have sticks to take home? Maybe if I just angle it this way. Well, don't just stand there. Help me save my stick. Just a little to the left. Almost there. Yes! Ha <laughs> ha! I have seen so many sticks in my time that I've begun to wonder, will I ever find the biggest stick? What if I find one? And I think it's the biggest. But then later, I find an even bigger one. And so on, and so on, forever and ever. Never ever finding the actual biggest stick. I guess my search will never end. Maybe it's best I just give up. I don't think I'll ever find... Wait. <laughs> Do you smell that? It smells like... The biggest stick! Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Over here, over here! No oh boy! I found it! I found the biggest stick! We gotta get this home quick and add it to the collection. I did it! I found the biggest stick! Yes, I did. Do, do, do. Wow! Today was a great day! I found the biggest stick and I can finally rest. But a dog like me doesn't rest for long when there's more sticks to find. Now I must find the smallest stick and the brownest stick and the stickiest stick and the leafiest stick and the muddiest stick. These dogs are obsessed with this shed. I wonder why. What is in there? Their parents had some guesses. Are there chipmunks in there? Chipmunks? This family doesn't know it yet, but they're about to become animal rescuers. A few days ago, the people went into their backyard and saw the dogs had chewed through the door of their shed. The dogs really wanted to get inside. Imagine chewing through a door. The people had to seal the front of it to keep them out. They didn't know the dogs were trying to tell them something. Hey, uh, somebody is trapped in there. This must be so hard for those dogs. Why? Why aren't you people getting it? Unfortunately, dogs can't talk. The dogs barked, scratched, and chewed, but their parents didn't get it. So, the dogs chewed harder. Mango, are, are you starting to chew the siding off as well? Until finally... Wait a minute. Now I have a pretty good idea of what's in that shed. The people got the message and got to work. They opened up the shed and... It's a kitten! Aw, she's so cute. She's probably hungry. And a little scared too. The dog saved her. Good doggies. But what was everybody going to do now? The family did not expect to meet a kitten today. They decided to give her some food and bring her inside where it was warm. She was a little afraid at first, but she definitely liked it better than that old shed. How the kitten got in there is still a total mystery. She could have gotten trapped in there, or she was running for shelter and she hid in there and she wasn't able to get out. The people really wanted to keep the kitten forever, but they were allergic to cats. <sighs> Having a cat in your family if you're allergic, that could be terrible. <laughs> so they called a friend, who just so happened to be looking for a kitten to adopt. And just like that, a little kitten went from living in a shed 
to living in a real home. It just goes to show, if you have patience and never give up, you can change somebody's life. You don't even have to be able to talk. Remember, if you see an animal in trouble, do not try to rescue them by yourself. Ask an adult family member for help. My mom helps me with the dogs I rescue. Wandy's always been really happy. Because when he was little, a hero saved his life. She found Wandy in her backyard with big scratches on his back. She wanted to take Wandy home and make him part of her family. But the more time they spent together, the more she noticed something wasn't right. Sometimes Wandy liked to do dog stuff, but other times he acted like something else. The lady decided to take Wandy to the vet, where they all got a big surprise. Wandy wasn't a dog, he was a dingo. Sorry, I'm a what? A dingo is a type of wild dog from Australia. They don't usually live with humans, and some people are actually afraid of them. The rescuer knew she couldn't raise a wild dingo in her house. So she called an animal sanctuary that's just for dingoes, who took in Wandy and introduced him to the pack. Wandy was pretty nervous to meet dingoes, even though he was one. He didn't know a thing about being a dingo. Weren't dingoes supposed to be fierce, scary, frightening? Wandy followed the others around and tried to copy what they were doing. Eventually, he figured out a few things, but the rescuers could tell he'd need some extra help. So they gave him a buddy. Hermione, the perfect dingo teacher. This is how you dig for food, Wandy. Now we wrestle. On a hot day, you just put your whole body in the water bin. Seriously, you gotta try it. Uh, Wandy, why are you eating grass? Don't look at me. No idea why he's doing that. With Hermione's help, Wandy started to get the hang of being a dingo. He sort of loved it. And he didn't have to be fierce at all. He played and explored and was part of the pack. Wandy still has a few things to learn though. Like not hogging the food. But he'll get all the time he needs to figure out who he is. A wild, silly, speedy dingo. With a family to call his own. And the best home. What's today? Yes, it's ball day! Having a ball because today is ball day! Ball day, ball day, ball day, all day! Oh! Hey friend, my name's Spud, and today's gonna be the best day because it's ball day! You, you don't know what ball day is? Really? Well, you see, ball day is whenever I get a new one of these. So round, so rolly, so ball-y. <sighs> I love you, ball. And you know what else is special about Ball Day? I never know when it's gonna happen. Whee! Ball Day can be any day. Yesterday, today, tomorrow, or even last Tuesday. Because Ball Day is whenever Laura decides to give me a ball. Who's Laura? She's my moon. You know, cause I'm a ball. Moo. And my mom said that today is gonna be the biggest ball day ever. Hmm, I wonder what she meant by that. Maybe I'm gonna get two balls. 
It could be anything. Anything that has to do with a ball, I mean. Whatever she meant, it's gonna be awesome! Just like every other ball day. Which is why I have the most amazing ball collection in the world. Wanna meet them? This smart looking lady is Brainy. Don't tell the others, but she's my favorite. And you already met my squishy friend, Big Green. Don't tell Brainy, but he's also my favorite. And then here is Little Green, no relation. And of course, there's Sunny. His name is Sunny because he's always in a good mood. Oh, and I call this white one Snowball. I'm still trying to think of a name for this one, but I'm sure I'll come up with one soon. You've probably noticed that I'm really good with names. Oh, and I almost forgot about Ink. Inky? Ugh, why does this keep happening? Well, I guess it's a good thing today is ball day. Ball day started right after I came here to live with Moom and her family. You see, we met in college. She was a student learning how to care for animals like me. And I was just a 300 pound baby that needed taking care of. We were together day after day, month after month. But then she graduated and I thought I'd never see her again until she adopted me. We had the best times together. She wanted to spend every single second with me, but she couldn't hang out in the field with me all day. And I wasn't sure what to do when she wasn't around. I tried some hobbies, like looking for stuff in haystacks and tractor chasing, but nothing seemed to click until Moom got me a ball. It was the first ever ball day. And it was such a big hit that we've celebrated ball day almost a hundred times now. Though oddly, I do not have anywhere near a hundred balls. Weird, right? So now every night when I lay down, I think to myself, will tomorrow be ball day? And every day when I wake up, I wonder, is today ball day? I can't wait to got my new ball. Spudly. <gasps> oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, I can't wait! <laughs> oh. My. Ball. There can't possibly be a bigger ball than this! It must have taken Moom forever to blow up. And I love it! I think I'm gonna call you Rainbow Sprinkles. Hmm. Or maybe Rainbow Surprise. No, I got it! Lucky! Because that's what I am too. One lucky bull with an amazing Moom who loves me more than anything. This was probably the best ball day ever! <gasps> I wonder if tomorrow will be ball day too! That giant moth looks like she's in trouble. I wonder why she just doesn't fly away. That ground's probably steaming hot. She might need some water. Or maybe she's looking for help. Luckily, Tala came along. Even though she was a little afraid of insects, she knew she couldn't leave the moth where it was. Anything could happen in her parking lot. Anything if you're out in the open. A car would have ran over her. A lizard could have come over and snatched her. A lizard would have been eaten by a snake maybe, or a bird. Anything. It looked like the moth was trying to dry her wings. Maybe she just came out of her cocoon. I bet that's why she couldn't fly away. So Tala held out her hand and the moth climbed right on. Moths are very fragile. They're very fragile. You can only touch their body and their body only. If you touch their wing, their tiny microscopic scales that you could pull off and that could make her not fly and she needs to fly. Moths need to fly. So Tala decided to wait with the moth to protect her. But the moth just sat there all day long. Tala was getting more worried. And to make things even worse, a storm was coming. So she brought the moth inside and found a safe place for her to rest. Once the storm passed, she took the moth outside and she flew away. Tala was relieved, but her moth rescuing days weren't over yet. In fact, they were just getting started because the moth had left behind moth eggs. Over 200 of them. 
and it didn't take long for them to hatch into baby caterpillars. If someone gave me 200 moth eggs, I'd be really excited. Imagine all the cuteness. Tyler watched over them while they grew. Bigger and bigger. They're like ginormous. Tyler loved taking care of them, which mostly meant feeding them a lot. Soon the caterpillars started spinning cocoons. They're doing that because they are getting ready to become moths. They need to spin a cocoon so they're safe on the outside world and then they hang upside down and then they start to form a shell and the skin starts to come off while the shell's moving downwards. After the shell's all over their body, they drop the skin and it starts forming the like the organs and everything starts switching places, starts moving around the antennae and then they start forming wings. And then after it hatches, it's just there, it's a moth. But when they finally emerged, Tala didn't think they looked much like their mum. Until their wings began to open. Finally, they were ready for their life in the wild. And Tala was so happy when she watched them fly away. Remember, if you see a moth or any other animal in danger, do not try and rescue them by yourself. Ask an adult family member for help. Bobby the dog is a bad boy. Bobby, that's not your towel. Give it back. You're not even wet. No, don't take my sock instead. Well, at least I've still got one sock. Bobby, not my other sock. Bobby, stop pulling our pants strings. We need those strings for our pants. It's like you're trying to change our whole outfit. Bad boy. Why don't you go take a drink and calm down? Bobby, you're supposed to drink the water, not get in it. I'm gonna say it again. Bad boy. Can't you be good for even five whole seconds? Here, how about some nice, fun toys? No way to be bad with those, right? Aw, oh, come on, Bobby, don't pout. What is up with you today? You used to be such a happy little pup. Adorable and sweet and innocent. What a good boy. Ha! Ah! Baby Bobby, stop! Don't rip that pillow! And don't pull that scarf. It'll get stretched and weird. Bad baby! Now that I think about it, maybe you were never good? You've always been like this. Are you just destined for a lifetime of badness? Bobby, stop trying to take your dad's cookie and pay attention to my scolding. All right, that's enough. There's too much stuff to tempt you in here. We need to at least get you out of the house, where there's less stuff to be bad with. There, that's right. Get all of that bad energy out. Good boy. Wow, is that a giant palm tree leaf? Wait, where'd that come from? Whoa, you definitely can't bring that big stick inside. It won't even fit through the door. I guess there are just too many things out here tempting you into badness. I think you need a change of scenery. Maybe a nice walk along this peaceful sandy beach will finally calm you down. Wait, Bobby, don't roll around in the sand. You'll get dirty. Great, now we have to give you a bath. Bad boy. Hang on, you're giving yourself a bath? Most of the dogs I know, which are many, hate taking baths, but you look really happy. Oh, you're not bathing, you're swimming. Wow, you're a natural swimmer, Bobby, and so well behaved at last. Wait, swimming, well behaved? <gasps> of course, it all makes sense now. All this time you weren't being bad. You were just trying to tell us you wanted to go to the beach. Taking the towels, trying to get us to change into our swimsuits, the giant palm tree, that big stick which may or may not have been driftwood, the window licking. Eh, 
Maybe not everything was a hint. You were letting us know that you're a bona fide boxer beach boy. Good dude. You're not a bad dog. You were just bored. But you're not bored when you're swimming. And now we're all having a blast. Water slide. Woo! Good boy. No, don't cut the line. Bad boy. Yeah, jump into the pool with your dad. Good boy. No, don't dunk your dad. Bad boy. Yeah, swim nicely with your mom. Good boy. Woof, all this choppy behavior is making me a little seasick. But not you, Bobby. You could never get sick of the sea or the pool. You even like your toys better in the water. I guess you're just like the sea, Bobby. Sometimes it's smooth sailing, and sometimes it's a little choppy. But you're still our little cuttlefish, and we love you, Bobby. You bad buoy. I mean, you bad boy. What is that? It looks like a box. These kayakers were paddling down a river when they spotted a mysterious box. Like literally there could be anything inside of a box. There's a little head. Moving! What is it? <gasps> is it a turtle? Poor turtle. The kayakers didn't know how the turtle got into the box, but they knew he needed to get out. He couldn't escape because he was too big because we saw a small hole. He was trapped. Time for a turtle rescue. But how? Reaching down into the box with their hands might not be such a good idea. The rescuers decided to use a kayak paddle to scoop the turtle out of the box and move him to safety. Hey. Hey. Wait a minute. I thought I saw multiple heads. There's two. A double mission? Okay. One's big and one's small. The first one will be named Diamond. The second one's name is Tim. Tim the Tiny Turtle. I hope he doesn't get spooked by that giant paddle. He must be heavy. Careful! The rescuer looked for a safe place to set the first turtle down. I'd say that's a good spot for a turtle. While turtle number one got some rest, it was time to rescue turtle number two. Okay. Oh, hi! Trying to swim on the paddle. The rescuers thought their job was done. Just to be safe, they decided to check the box one more time. A third one? I have decided that this one's name is Little Dorian. <laughs> so many turtles! And a fourth? Okay, I, I, I was not prepared for this. Since the fourth was a mystery to me, its name is going to be Mystery. The turtles were free, and they knew exactly where to go. Straight to the river. Goodbye, Diamond. Goodbye, Tiny Tim. Goodbye, Little Dorian. Goodbye, Mystery. We don't know what could have happened to those turtles if they never showed up. Before you decide to walk away, you have to check things out. Every time I see a box up ahead, I tell my mom to roll down the window just so I can stick my head out to see if there's anything inside it. Normally it's nothing, but I check just in case every day because sometimes it is the turtles. Remember, if you see turtles or any other animal in danger, do not try to rescue them by yourself. Ask an adult family member for help. When Abba was in danger, something very unusual saved his life. Honey? 
How in the world could honey save a turtle? Well, Abba had gotten tangled in a ghost net. Basically, a fishing net that's been lost or left in the ocean. Sometimes, curious turtles like Abba swim into them by mistake. In this time, Abba was so stuck, he could barely move his flippers. He was afraid he'd never swim again. But these rescuers said, we'll show that net who's boss. They were gonna do whatever it took to get Abba free. Even though he was scared, Abba knew that if his rescuers could be so brave, he could be brave too. But the net was very tangled. It was pinching Abba hard. Abba's new friends didn't want to accidentally hurt him. This net was gonna need to come off one string at a time. We're just trying to just get them slightly out of the way. Abba knew they were trying to be gentle. So he tried to be patient. Even though there were so many strings to cut, the rescuers didn't quit until they got them all. Abba was free. Take that, ghost net. But this turtle rescue wasn't over yet. Abba wanted to swim away, but he couldn't. The net had injured his flippers. Good thing his rescuers were vets. So instead of going for a swim, Abba was going for a ride to get those flippers fixed. Abba was nervous. He'd never been to a vet before. Was he going to get a shot? Did he need stitches? Were they gonna operate? Would they make him swallow a big pill? Also, what's a pill? When they got to the clinic, he wasn't quite sure what to expect. But he was pretty surprised when they pulled out a big box of honey. Humans have been using honey to help cuts heal for thousands of years. And it works on turtles too. The doctor spread the honey on Abba's flippers. A little here, and a little here. Then they carefully wrapped his flippers in bandages. Abba was like, honey, do your thing. As Abba healed, he started to get his strength back. And his appetite. It's a lot easier to catch food when you're not stuck in a net. It didn't take long before Abba's flippers were back to full flipping speed. He was feeling like his strong and wild self again. The honey had done its thing, and it was time for another ride. He was going back to the sea. At last. Yeah. Here we go. Let's go, let's go. Abba was so happy to be in the ocean again. He swam as fast and as far as he could. He never wanted to stop, but he'll always remember his rescuers. And he'll never forget how he was saved by honey. When rescuers first spotted Maple, they couldn't believe what they were seeing. I mean, can you? Maple is an aardwolf, which is sort of like a tiny hyena. Aardwolves are very shy, so most people go their whole life without seeing one. And yet, here she was, all alone and needing help. Maple was dehydrated and too young to be by herself. Luckily, Maple had been brought to the exact right place, a wildlife hospital, where they take the best care of animals. Like this monkey with a broken arm, and this bush baby, and this pangolin who was born a little too small. Maple was also too small. For her to go back to the wild, she needed to grow. So the vets broke out their special baby aardwolf bottle. Every day, her rescuer would feed her and let her explore the backyard. At first, Maple didn't want to leave her rescuer's side but soon she was sniffing every inch of the yard. Maple grew and grew until finally she was ready for her first real meal. 
bugs. This was a big deal for a little Ardwolf. Her rescuer knew Maple was ready for the next step in her journey. Wilderness practice. Before she could be a wild Ardwolf again, she needed to feel comfortable outside of the backyard. So one day, her rescuer took Maple for a ride. Hey, Mapes. To her new home in an even bigger outdoor enclosure. At first, Maple was a little scared. This didn't look like the backyard she was used to. But Maple decided to be brave. A little walking, a little sniffing, and then... Wait, hold up. There are bugs here? Maple finally understood that this was the place she was meant to be. Her rescuer would visit at night to bring her a bottle, and breakfast in the morning, of course. It's an Aardwolf's most important meal of the day. Until the day finally came when Maple was ready to be fully wild. So her rescuer left her enclosure open. Maple could leave whenever she was ready. And finally, she did. Stronger and braver than ever. But not before looking back to thank her rescuer. You're the toughest little squirrel we know, Rocky. Rocky was found all alone. What is it? And he's way too tiny. But we're here for you, Rocky. You can count on us. You're a curious little squirrel. But you're so tiny. We want to release you back home to the wild. But you're not feeling well enough yet. Let's get you some milk. That's what every growing baby squirrel drinks. There you go. Since you're so little, we have to feed you almost every hour. No, you want me to clean your face off first? He makes mess. Hmm, Rocky, you're not really growing. You're still smaller than a tiny battery. What's wrong? We keep feeding you milk, but it doesn't seem to be working. Usually milk helps squirrels grow big, but you're so small. Wait a minute. Maybe this is the wrong kind of milk. You might be lactose intolerant. We'll get you a new special formula to try. Here you go, Rocky. I hope this works. Gotta get stronger to go back to the wild again. Sleepy squirrel, close your eyes. We'll check on you tomorrow. Hi, Rocky. You seem good this morning. But did you gain weight? Hey, a little bit. We can try other foods now. Big squirrel. Somebody's feeling good. But we'll need to test how strong you are before we're sure you're ready for the wild. The winner by knockout, the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, Rocky the Lactose Intolerant Red Squirrel! Are you ready, Rocky? It's a big day today. I think you're strong enough now to be on your own in the wild. You can start in this release house to get used to all the noises and animals outside. But we'll leave the door open so you can go when you're ready. Bye, Rocky! We'll miss you, you tough little squirrel. Your heart is in the trees. That's where you belong. You were alone, but somehow we found you. And figured out that you were sick. We're so glad we could help. And so glad you're feeling all better. 
Why is this dog wandering in the middle of the road? Francis is a stray dog. He doesn't have a home or people to take care of him. A man spotted him walking around his neighborhood. And he knew he just had to rescue him. Good boy. Right away, the rescuer ran into a problem. Every time he got close to Francis, Francis would walk away. No matter how much he fed him or how nice and gentle he was, he wants some more. Francis just did not trust him. The rescuer needed Francis to come to his home where it was safe. But Francis wouldn't even let the rescuer close enough for a pet. It took a lot of patience just to get Francis to take a treat from his hand. But that's as close as he'd get. The rescuer almost gave up. But one night, when he was feeding Francis, another dog showed up, named Howard. Howard also didn't seem to love people. Oh, be quiet. But the rescuer didn't mind. I know you're not mean. When he gave Francis food, he invited Howard too. Howard realized that the rescuer was a good guy and they became fast friends. See? Good boy, good boy. Then the best thing happened. That's a good boy. When Francis saw how happy Howard was, he decided to let the rescuer pet him too. Now that both dogs trusted him, it was time to try phase two of the rescue, getting them home to safety. But when the rescuer tried to take them with him, only Howard hopped in the car. Francis was trusting, but he wasn't ready to go to the rescuer's house. He decided that he would take Howard home with him, and together, they'd come and find Francis in the morning. So the next day, Howard and the rescuer woke up early and got a big surprise. Francis had decided to come home after all. Good boy, you want to go see your friend? He was still a little nervous, but he knew that if Howard was happy in his new home, he'd be happy here too. And he was right. Now these two have a safe place to play and someone who cares about them. They're not stray pups anymore because their rescuer never gave up on them. Good boy. And with his help, Howard was able to rescue Francis and Francis rescued Howard. What's wrong, puppy? When rescuers spotted Billy, she couldn't move her body at all. Is she just really tired? Or is she sick? You're probably feeling scared, aren't you, pup? But you don't need to worry. Let's find you somewhere comfy to rest and figure out how to help you feel all better. Good girl. While we wait for the animal clinic to open, let's give you a bath. You have a lot of itchy fleas in your fur from being outside, but we'll get them all out using this special comb. There they are. I bet you're glad those are gone. We can tell you're so thirsty, but you're too weak to drink out of a bowl. So we're gonna use this syringe to give you plenty of water. That's it, Billy, drink up. Even though you got some rest, you still can barely move. Luckily, the clinic is finally open. They'll know what to do. The vet said the reason you can't move isn't because you're tired. It's because some tick bites made you sick. That'll take more time to fix. But it's gonna be okay, Billy. This food has some special medicine in it. 
that the vet says will help you heal. Try to eat it all. I know it's hard to keep your head up, but we don't mind holding you for as long as you need us to. And while you wait for the medicine to start working, you've got plenty of friends to keep you company. They can't wait to play with you, Billy. Wow, Billy! A few days of medicine and rest has made a big difference. We're hardly holding you up at all. And you're starting to scoot around all by yourself. And after a few more days, you're standing. Now that you're feeling a little better, do you think you're ready to try some walking? Ready? You got this, Billy. The whole family is rooting for you. That's it, just take it slow at first. You're doing it. You're walking, Billy. Uh-oh, look out for that step. Oh, you did it! And you look so happy to finally be moving again. Good girl. <laughs> Who's ready for a trip to the beach? And we've got one more surprise for you, Billy. A forever family. That's right, you're getting adopted. And your new family is going to make sure that you get all the love that you deserve. We love you too, Billy. And we're so glad you're feeling all better. Ooh, big yawn. It's not every day you find a tiny mole in your garden especially a baby mole with no family around. So we knew we were in for an adventure when we rescued you. Right away we realized you were a very bossy mole. You didn't let anyone get between you and food. That's why we decided to name you Princess Edna. Okay, Princess. You'd need to learn a lot about being a mole before you could go back to the wild. You didn't even know what those big feet were for yet. You had a feeling it had something to do with burrowing. Hey, that's not a dirt pile, that's our hand. You'd have to figure it out later. First, you needed to eat and grow. We couldn't give you food fast enough. You ate your body weight in food every day. <laughs> and about half of it got on your face. Ready for your first nose test, little mole? Yep, you smelled it. Nothing gets between Princess Edna and her mush. But eating was easy. Your first big challenge was walking. It was funny watching you grow into your feet. You had huge front feet for digging, but your back feet, no, they're not just for scratching. They're also for walking. But big front feet and small back ones made you very wobbly. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, <laughs> are you stuck? It's okay, Edna. Moles aren't built for walking on blankets. Those feet are for digging in the dirt. Soon, you were clomping around like you were in charge. <laughs> you weren't called Princess Edna for nothing. And now that you could move, you were finally ready to follow your nose. <laughs> I love it when she sniffs. You used your super strong sense of smell to figure out What's over here? What's this weird soft wall? Do I smell milk? Soon, you were trying to burrow into everything. That's not a dirt pile. That's not a dirt pile either. We knew what you were trying to tell us. You were ready for the real thing. Dirt! The first day we put you on the soil, you knew exactly what to do. You burrowed straight down. It was like you suddenly realized, oh, this is what my feet are for. It made us happy to see you in your element. But we were sad knowing you'd be ready to go back to the wild soon. You started spending every day in the dirt. When we'd wake you up, you were not impressed. I'm sleeping here. Where's the food? And one day, it was time. We made you a fancy mole going back to the wild contraption. 
of Princess Edna Castle. And we left you a little note. Little princess, it said, you will stay in my heart forever. Miss you already. Then we dug a hole in the earth. All you'd have to do was go through the tubes and burrow away. The only thing left to do was say goodbye. Bye, Edna. We were going to miss you burrowing around in the wool and making the biggest messes, but we knew you needed to live a wild life. After all, you were a wild little princess. Help the kittens find the subscribe button.